Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to configure a prompt so that if a command fails, the dollar sign over here is going to turn red. For example, if we run who am I, which is going to be successful, notice that nothing changes. But if we run a command here that doesn't exist, notice that it immediately turns red. This is really nice to get instant feedback on whether or not the previous command was successful. Now, in this case, it's pretty clear something didn't work here because Z-Shell is saying, hey, by the way, command not found. But there are certain tools that is not, you know, nothing is going to be reported if it doesn't work. For example, in this case, we can grab for something that's not going to match, and this is actually going to fail. Now, if you've, if you've used grep a few times, you probably know how it works, and if you don't get a re uh, response back here from grep, then you know it failed. But that requires a little bit of domain knowledge about grep, like what happens if you're using a tool where you're not really sure if it worked or not from you know it being run. In this case, having the visual indicator is pretty nice. So in this video, we're gonna go over a solution, actually a couple of different solutions. It's going to work with Zshell as well as Bash, two different solutions there. It's not gonna require any plugins or extensions or you know extra functions that you need to load. It's basically just going to be a little condition that you can drop into your prompt or PS1 and you're off to the races there. So yeah, let's go over all of that. But before we get into the solution itself, let's do a very, very quick primer on how Xcode monitoring works in your shell. And if you're already familiar with that, then feel free to skip around in the timestamps. But yeah, check this out. So if you run something like who am I and we do echo uh, dollar sign question mark here, we can see the Xcode of the last run command. In this case, it was successful. It returned zero. So it's a Unix standard here if your command is successful to return zero, but if we return some type of error, then it's common to return a non-zero exit code. For example, in this case, we can run something like who am I to, and then rerun this echo command here, and we can see that we get an exit code of 127. Now, there are some common exit codes that you might see. Um, you can always Google those. That's not gonna be important for this video, but really the takeaway here is when it fails, it's gonna be something that is not zero. So we can see if we go back to this other echo command here, when grep didn't match, we can also see that in this case, you know, the exit code was one instead of 127 in this case. So that's really basically high level overview of how to get the last exit code of the previous command, dollar sign, question mark. Okay, so we're in a pretty good spot now just to take a look here at some of, uh, well, let me split it the other way so it's a little bit easier to read for us. Uh, yeah, some of the solutions here. Now, this is a little script they put together here, but we're not going to really really running the script. It's more as a reference note for me. Uh, and you to potentially look at if you just want to, you know, look at stuff. And by the way, there's going to be a blog post with all of this here, so you can copy paste all the text. Don't feel free like you need to pause the video and uh, manually do all that. Uh, but yeah, in this case, let's go with the Z shell solution first because I happen to be running Z shell here. You know, that's the bash one, and yeah, we'll see that in a little bit. But in this case, you know, I'm just setting a little variable called prompt. That's a pretty standard thing with Z shell. Whereas with bash, you can use a PS1, whatever. But in this case, yeah, let's just uh, go over a little bit of this. So we're basically going to be ignoring most of this just because we're really going to be focusing on the dollar sign itself. So everything to the left of that, you know, like username and host and the path that you're currently at, you know, that's a lot of what you see over here. So all of this basically is not even necessary to look at for the sake of this video. You know, it's a totally separate topic. We're really going to be focusing just on this as well as that. And then, yeah, with the bash one, it's going to be basically the whole thing here that we'll take a look at. So in this case here at prompt, you know, I, I copied that first line here, but let's just modify this real fast just to get a basic understanding of how this works. So like if I wanted to use a pipe uh, symbol here instead of dollar sign uh, in both spots, I would just change both of those dollar signs to pipes. And now we just have a pipe there. And you know, if I run something like a who am I to here, you know, now we get a red pipe. So, you know, again, like if you weren't using dollar sign, it would be as easy as that to change the things. But uh, yeah, let's go back to the original prompt with the dollar sign, just so we're back to normal here. Uh, I'll clear that so we have a little bit more room. Cool. So yeah, let's uh, break down this little condition here just so it makes a little bit more sense. So notice the brackets, that's very important there, or the braces, whatever you want to call them, uh, parentheses. Notice the uh, question mark. So that's very similar to what we saw before monitoring the exit code of the previous run command. So Z shell has this really nice little, uh, I don't even know, expression that or whatever condition, I don't know, however you want to describe this, it lets us do this very concisely. So we can say like, okay, question mark, uh, this is going to evaluate the last run command. And if the last run command was successful, then it's going to execute this part. It's basically a ternary operator, you know, like a one line if condition, if you're uh, programming in, you know, Python or some other language, uh, lots of them support that idea, but notice that they're separated by the uh, dots over here or the periods. So in this case, the successful case is going to be the first part. And like the else part of the condition, you know, if the command failed, then that's going to be what's uh, selected over here. So in this case, you know, successful, cool, dollar sign failed. Yep, dollar sign as well. However, we're going to use some nice little, you know, Z shell features here to basically set the foreground color to be red. 
and then you know we reset the color back. But in that case, you know that that's how that works. So if we do something like a who am I two, we can see this is going to execute this else condition here. We're going to get the red dollar sign. But if things are going to work nicely, then uh, yeah, we just get the dollar sign without any colors, and we're good to go. So if you want to customize this even more, I don't know if you want to have like a, a green dollar sign for successful. It's all totally up to you. You know, you can do whatever you like with your prompt. And by the way, all this stuff is up on my dot files. Like my prompt is basically this. A little bit more because I include Git branches and stuff, but that wasn't important for this video. There'll be a link to that one in the description. But there is a a variant, a variant of this and then one that we can do too as well. So for example, here's a normal prompt. Everything is looking normal, right? If I do a who am I, who am I? Uh, we don't see any difference here, but if we do a who am I too here, we can actually now see the error code itself. So remember when we did this before, we got an error code of 127. And in this case, if we also, I don't know, echo grep high, you know, we can see that we get an error code of one. This could also be pretty useful. Uh, I find that this takes up a little bit too much of my prompts, uh, but it's pretty close. It's debatable on uh, whether or not I want to use this one or not, but um, yeah, I figured I'd include the option there in case you want to use it because it is sort of kind of handy, especially if you're developing like a really big script or something where you have multiple exacodes. It's kind of nice to just see immediately which one you get without having to check yourself using a dollar sign question mark. Uh, but yeah, the difference there is uh, really not too much. So, you know, this was the original implementation here up top and the modified version is down here. So it's like still using the same pattern that we saw before with a dollar sign uh, or what the um, question mark wrapped in the parentheses here. Successful case, yep, just dollar sign like usual before. Now the only difference here is uh, just this part here, really. So I mean, yeah, we changed the dollar sign to be this or whatever, but this is, you know, in brackets, the thing that's actually doing the magic here, because this is a uh, parenthesis question mark. Uh, this is giving us the actual exit code number. So in this case, you know, nothing is hard coded. You know, this is this part like that I have selected up here is going to be the 127 or the one or whatever the exit code happens to be. So yeah, that's pretty uh, handy with Z shell. Not too bad to get all this rolling. And also, Pretty cool, right? Like this is how we had the original one and then here it is slightly modified. Although I should say probably the percent B should be at the end there as well. I think I think, I think that was just a copy paste issue there, nothing big. Uh, but yeah, let's go over the bash version of this one now is, you know, in case you're not using C shell. So in this case, I can just run bash to start uh, a bash session here. Yeah, notice that nothing is colored up because, you know, I have a Z shell RC file where all this stuff is configured here, but I don't have a bash RC file that has anything set up. So we're basically just dealing with a very default setup here. Now with the bash one, you know, I didn't bother putting all the stuff before the dollar sign here. You know, these nice little human ways to reference different colors with bash is not going to work out of the box. But in this case, you know, I kind of just replaced the first part of the prompt with periods here or dot, dot, dot. So let's go and just uh, apply that one here. Let me paste it down. And then we can see our PS1. Uh, that's basically our prompt. It's just just dot 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 dollar sign and then you know we can start typing whatever we want so if we do a who am i here we can see things are working uh, no difference whatsoever but again if you run a command that doesn't work here then we can see command not found and then we can see that immediately the dollar sign turned red so we get the same exact behavior or end result that we get with z shell but now this works with bash if you've written a little bit of shell scripts in the past then uh this shouldn't look too too crazy uh, so basically, you know, we're just launching some command here wrapped in parentheses with the dollar sign. Notice that these two dollar signs are escaped too. Pretty important little detail here because we want these this condition here or this condition here to be evaluated every single time uh, your PS1 is being invoked, basically every command that you run. If you did not escape this, then this is only going to be run once. I think when your bash RC loads, so it's always going to report uh, one of those conditions there. And yeah, you wouldn't get the behavior that you want. So that's why those are escaped. Inside of here, we basically just have uh, a shorthand like one line if condition here with bash you know we're, this is the expression here it's like well did the previous run command return execute zero you know just like we show, saw with echo dollar sign question mark in the past and earlier in this video here but yeah if it's successful here it worked let's just echo dollar sign here. In this case, I'm using single quotes instead of double quotes because we don't want the dollar sign to be evaluated as a shell script. We literally want to output the dollar sign itself. So that's why it's wrapped in single quotes in both places here. But then if the else condition fires here, basically if it's a non-zero exacode, because that's the Unix standard for failing commands here, then we just echo out the dollar sign just like we do over here. However, we also uh, decorate it with a little bit of coloring. And in this case, 31 happens to be like the normal red color. Maybe I'll throw up a little overlay if you want to you know, play around with some variants there. But yeah, uh, in this case, yeah, it just turns red. And then this is basically resetting things back to the default value of, uh, you know, whatever terminal uh, default color you want. 
But that is going to be it. Now, I will leave this one to be an exercise for you if you actually want to also include the Xcode with Bash. It's not like it's gonna be too, too crazy, but personally, you know, I happen to use Z-Shell, so I have no use case to set that one up. I just wanted to give you something that works with Bash as well, just to get you going here, you know, so you can have some colored up terminal if you like. So that is going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one.